So, I'm uh, going to do my second of um, second YouTube video on a comprehensive guide to finding hammered silver coins. And I thought I'd come outside where it's freezing cold and then that might get me to uh, speak a bit quickly and uh, you can get on with the, your real life and your real hunting yourself, can't you? Okay, so I did one on signals. I'm going to combine that with location. Now, it, I think it's a big argument to say that the location is more important than the signal. Um, basically, it, <laughs> you can only find a hammer coin where there is a hammer coin. So, some fields, you, you know, they won't be there. I did hear a detectorist say that he was told himself by an older detectorist that there's a hammer coin on every field, which is a positive attitude to have. Um, but some fields you've got far more chance on because you know they're there other fields not so much so it's finding that location yeah um, cause a hammer coin could be anywhere but we're just talking about increasing your probabilities of being on a, fil a field with them on and when you're on that field increasing the probability that you're going to find them on there so the first thing about location is your county. If you're unlucky like me in Lancashire, there's just not as many as there is in Norfolk, Suffolk, Lincolnshire, near York, Wiltshire. Basically, the further you go down south and the further you head towards Kent, uh, the better. Um, you will have, I mean, I, I'm in Lancashire, as I've said, and people leave Lancashire to go to Lincolnshire, to go towards York, uh, maybe even further down south to try and metal detect. You don't get many people travelling from Norfolk to go and detect in Lancashire. Okay, so that's the first thing. So you may consider getting in the car and travelling to try and uh, find some of these hammered coins. Okay. Uh, one tip for finding uh, a good permission is to go near uh, old villages. You know, these little old hamlets, if you like, that are on the A roads with old stone buildings. You know, if you're driving up and down the motorway, you won't see them, but go on the A roads and you'll go through little tight bendy roads where you can get more of a sense that the horse and carts have been through there. That was the old centre of where people lived. So, you know, after the Industrial Revolution, a lot of things changed. But those are the places that if you can get near to, places that, have, you know, you can see an old church in the village. If you can get close to the centre of those, then that's just where people lived in the times when they were dropping uh, silver hammer coins. So places like that. You basically want to head where there was wealth it, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred years ago. Uh, another tip is uh, to listen to other detectorists. You know, if you join a metal detecting club, they might say, you know, uh, near this town, near this village, I had a load of hammer coins in the past. Um, basically, they'll give you kind of an idea of the district. Um, I wouldn't kind of, uh, <laughs> uh, if they let slip what farm they're on, you might, they might not be too friendly if you go and knock on the farmer's door and ask to go on as well yourself. Um, but if they tell you a, a specific district, particularly the older detectorists who perhaps don't go out as much anymore, with the modern machinery, you can kind of go back and, you know, just go over familiar places. Okay. Uh, uh, another little tip, if someone says you know people can do throwaway comments and um, like uh, well I wouldn't bother going near York anymore it's been completely detected out there's nothing there now I mean you can go on a field again and again and again so going near a place you know don't don't listen to any of that kind of talk if there's been fines there in the past there'll still be some now okay so don't let that put you off uh, as well, if you knock on a farmer's door and they say, well, you can go on, but it's been detected before, you won't find much. Don't be put off by that. 
it's you know you go check it out yourself there's if it's a good place there'll be something on there and they you know detectorist could have picked off you know 20 years ago some of the bigger finds but there may be all those little hammer coins left might and that okay so let's say you're lucky enough to have three or four farms 20 30 fields I know you might not you might only have one field if you've only got one field then that's the place you're going to be going on but if you've got quite a few sites and you've gradually built them up then you'll end up filtering yourself anyway and um, but here's a little heads up you want to you want to filter down and increase your probability of where these hammered coins are now these uh, hammered coins are quite tiny and they can be quite difficult to find but here's an idea for you like a pilot fish idea so the pilot fish shows the way to go uh, there are other items from the same time period that are bigger than hammered coins and are far easier to find steaming here um, and I'll go back inside and I'll clip in uh, a bit of a tail of what these items are that will be easier to find okay and they'll show you they'll show you the way as to which fields you'd be better off on okay so this uh, pilot fish idea hammer coins are quite small there's some bigger than that and some smaller um, but there are items from the same time period that are bigger and easier to find I've been lucky enough to find two Pilgrim's Ampulas um, and yeah I'll tell you the, the story of the the fields <laughs> uh, in a moment but uh, so I found that Pilgrim's Ampula and then later on I found seven hammered coins uh, not too far from that on the same field I found that on a, uh, a field and not too much later I found 14 hammered coins on on that field okay uh, but they came off first before any hammered coins so there will be items or there may be items from the same time period so if you've got two fields and one that starts giving you large medieval items and others don't then that's the field you want to head to a medieval item more common than a pilgrim's ampulla is spindle walls so spin spindle walls is probably one of your best indicators of people on that land from that time period not just passing through but working there living there eating there making clothes there mending clothes there uh, basically medieval uh, activity well before medi before medieval activity they all go back to Roman times so if you've got a field with spindle walls on and other fields with nothing of that time period coming on then that's the field that you want to be going on okay so that's your pilot fish idea just basically bigger items that are easier to find than hammered coins and then you're in business okay so let's say you're on that field or you're on any field um, where are the hammered coins gonna be well again they could be anywhere uh, and I'll come on to the most important uh, thing you need to be looking for to find them uh, by far the most important thing um, but there's again there's no guarantee but I know experienced detectorists uh, will check out the high ground uh, so if there's like a hillock in the middle of your field uh, a lot of detectorists will check out the top of that people have been stood on the top of there having a good look round um, people will check out uh, basically you're checking out different features in the land so if there's a little dip then I'd check out the little dip of course in time you're going to check out the whole field um, but you could all uh, one of the best places is old pathways now you might 
I don't really look at ordnance survey maps and all this kind of stuff. I just generally check out the land. Um, but or you know the farmer might tell you, but it, you might be able to see it on the land. You know where people are likely to walk between. So old medieval pathways people would have been walking up and down those that's why they're created like if you've got a hillside and you can see a track through that's where people walked not over the rocky ground and it'll be same on farmland so if there's a pathway and um, you might not even you might not know that there's a pathway but as you're walking over the ground between the kind of landscape you may be filtered in a particular way and so people would have been in the past so look out for old pathways, that's a very, very good place to find. The other thing that you're looking for is uh, natural choke points. Uh, the easiest is, of course, a gateway. So a big rectangular field has got a, an access point, a gateway. That's where people would have had to come and go onto that field. So they'd be filtered through there. So in terms of probability, people have just stepped along through that gateway probably way more than any other point on the field I know they get compacted and are hard to dig but check around gateways that's a really good place to be finding well anything but of course these uh, lovely little hammered coins I know it's a simplistic diagram but why not so if you've got like an L-shaped field and you're looking for these natural choke points, the farmer who's in here and is going to get out of his gate, from this area they're going to go around that bend there. So this is a kind of a natural choke point to check out where there's, there could be items. Okay. Again, you might not be able to see a pathway, but if you've got a rectangular field with two gates, they're, they're likely to have travelled in between those two. So this area could be an area of um, activity that people have dropped stuff. Uh, of course the edges of fields are good to check. Um, you will probably find um, a lot of uh, modern things dropped there, cans and the like, so that can be frustrating. But if there's finds there then that's because people have been there and dropped them. If you've got a field that borders onto um, you know, a modern road or pathway, then there'll be a lot of modern stuff chucked over the edge along there. But again, that could be a place that you gradually clean out and some of the old stuff, uh, usually smaller, pops out of there. I know another detectorist who says that, the, and he's found quite a lot, that he generally checks out the middle of a field um, his theory being that well and he's found stuff there but his theory being that if you own if you own the farm and you own that field you're not going to be skulking walking around the edges you're going to be in the middle of the field um, he's he gives this paints this kind of nice picture of uh, back in medieval times they gathered there would have been a lot of people working on the land then that they gathered in the harvest once the harvest was in they'd have a bit of a, a knees up and a bit of a booze up in the centre of the field and perhaps dropped one or two of these uh, medieval coins while they were there. But he's had a lot of success in the middle of the fields. But generally you're looking for what detectorists will refer to as a hot spot. Um, so across the field there'll be patches where finds are coming up far more than anywhere else. Uh, and for whatever reason the people were there, walking through there, stood there, had market stalls there, whatever. So you're looking for the hot spots on a field. Uh, one of these places where you'll find hot spots, which for a detectorist, it, you know, detectorists can avoid it, don't feel quite nice. It's where you'll find quite a lot of iron. If you if you're getting a lot of iron signals. Well, somebody was dropping iron and they would have had a few coins in their pocket, wouldn't they? So where there's an iron patch, if you go across a field, um, I did it myself in the early days, you're going across a field and you're getting a lot of iron and you kind of like get really fed up and you kind of skip on that and then go on to somewhere else and you're, oh great, I just found a Queen Victoria penny again. Um, you want to go back to that iron area. You might have to clear out 
quite a bit of the iron over time but you're looking for these little sharp signals in amongst it that could be your hammered silver coins okay now this is the most crucial piece of information about finding a hammered silver coin the number one the number one driver of finding a hammered silver coin or as uh, any detectorist familiar with it will know is good news bad news a hammered coin uh, I'll explain if you're on a field and you find a hammered coin the by far the most likely place for your next hammered coin is close to where that hammered coin was found these things are yes they're found individually but yeah you'll find uh, a lot more near there right I'll go through uh, my finds quickly and I'll point out which so keep saying I got 45 I'll point out how they were in terms of whether they were on their own or whether they were close together and I'll give you a bit of a bit of an idea on that but I cannot emphasize this point enough um, if you find a hammered coin you don't want to be going away from that so you might have been digging I don't know a hundred times and found and I don't know, you find your first hammered coin you do not go wandering off you find a hammer coin in a field and 20 minutes later you are, you know 150 feet away from there you've probably gone wrong okay you want to be hunting around that spot outwards digging absolutely every single peep and pap from that coin outwards yeah, you may find that you get drawn back to that spot five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, and then on the tenth visit, you get another hammered coin out of there when the ground has slightly moved or a bit of rain or, or whatever. Okay. Um, a couple, of, couple of other little tips on that. If you uh, follow that advice, you dig a hammered coin and then you start digging a load of holes um, and spreading out from there. Uh, I don't have GPS um, on anything, um, so what what I'll do is after I've checked that hole and checked around it, I'll get a you know a small stone um, like you know that stands out a bit of a white stone or whatever, and I'll put it on the lid that I've put back because what can happen is you start digging. 10 or 15 holes from there and you then turn around and you will not be sure where that hammered coin was so you just put a little stone on the ground uh, not a giant rock you don't want to annoy the farmer just a little stone on the ground that you can identify where that was you know look left and right and get a marker so you can work your way back in because seriously that is the spot that you want to be um, uh, another little tip if you're relatively new to the hobby and you go on a, dr a group dig and you find your first hammered coin do not do not shout out hammered 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 oh I'm so happy woo 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 because what's going to happen is that all the experienced detectorists well yeah a lot of experienced detectorists Basically, all the barracudas are going to come swimming across and going to start detecting as close to you as they that they can politely get. Okay, so just keep it to yourself and start detecting around there. Obviously, if it's a hood, you've got to report it. But that's a little tip for you. Like I say, where these things are found, if you start finding, you know, five, six, seven of them. Uh, over a farm that you've got with I don't know four or five fields and you've got three on one field one on another and none on the rest I, like I said I don't have GPS but what I do is I go to Google Maps put a piece of paper over it and I trace around at a good size the a map of the field 
and on the paper I mark as accurately as I can where I've found the hammered coin and then you can build up a bit of a picture of any hot spots that you've got because you will be surprised um, you'll think oh it was opposite that third tree and then you go back and it clearly wasn't the third tree yeah or when you check your map it's like oh, hang on a minute no it was the left of the gate from the satellite picture not the right of the gate yeah so all that kind of thing yeah when you start to look back because it's important to remember where you had that coin I'm gonna have to go in soon because it's absolutely freezing okay so I hope you get the idea of those pilot fish items drawing you into a particular field helpful and the most important thing once you find a hammered coin then you're in business we can't separate out location and signal so I'm going to come back around to signal to uh, finish off um, right you you will have heard quite a bit of this I would describe detecting as in kind of three levels you know just as an idea to get you thinking on something level one is I would describe as um, you know basically what new people do to it so we call it newbie detecting it's when people go quite fast and um, just got a detector you see a field you want to do the field and you you race across and if you find if you hear a tiny little noise you'll probably ignore it you're looking for those big signals um, a George you know you're thrilled to bits when you find your jo the first George the third you can't believe something 1700s you know those silver shillings bang out a massive signal and a cartwheel penny oh my god so you're looking for those big items and if you do kind of get a small item you dig it it's usually a ring pull or a piece of lead or just basically a bit of crap so you'd kind of ignore all the little signals and race across and then you get kind of told to that that's not wrong uh, but if you're looking for uh, hammer coins you need to go low and slow okay um, yeah okay so in newbie detecting you'll have, you'll be swinging and striding across okay and there'll be two main th three main things that'll go wrong with that and we'll talk about two at the start so if we have a little look at what's going wrong with your uh, newbie detecting what's happening is if you stride and your stride length is longer than your detector head then as you swing every time you swing yeah, and this is an exaggeration. You're going to be leaving great big patches of the ground that the detector head hasn't covered, and it won't ping. It won't. It, it can't ping unless it's underneath the detector head. So that's why they talk about you know not going too fast. And the second level of detecting is called low and slow. So the slow is to bring those lines back together so that you're actually covering all the ground as you go forward okay so you can't stride longer than your detector head okay uh, the second thing you want to do is to keep the detector head as low to the ground as possible so if that's your ground you want to be swinging so that it goes just above the ground in a straight line and not what people do can do at the start is swinging it like that Okay, you want to go left and right keeping the detector head flat so that these uh, beams from your detector head can come straight down and straight back up again. So, was it, this is the, was it, treating myself to a new detector head. I know it's the large coil, but with low and slow, you'll be going slow, walking across, keeping the detector head low, flat to the ground, and so that you're not striding beyond the detector coil head okay okay so uh, why low and slow well basically it's just to give yourself time to find the smaller items you're racing across you're likely to catch a big thing uh, but not so much the small not so much the smaller one okay 
okay so looking for so going low and slow something that I haven't really heard people say so this might be my little bit to add to it um, or just maybe emphasize it when people are going what they call low and slow they talk about giving the machine time to kind of find that signal I'm not quite sure that's the kind of the best way of describing it you're giving your brain time to be able to pick up on that little noise if you swing the detector head fast the detector is probably going to ping backwards and forwards you know this thing will fire its beam pretty fast and receive it back pretty fast the thing that needs to process it isn't so much the machine it's it's your brain okay um yeah <laughs> yeah hang on let me just gather, gather my thoughts okay so um yeah was it I, when i was trying to pick up on finding these uh, smaller hammered coins i came across a video by west country clegg and he took uh, somebody out who wasn't finding any hammered coins and tried to try to show him and it was really quite it was really quite eye-opening and funny that um he was with this guy and he showed him a signal from a hammered coin and he was pulling his face a little bit about you know the small noise and then i think if i remember rightly he he buried it in something that he could retrieve and went over the top and this other guy this this newbie if you like was disgusted it, like he was like he said he was, he was saying i wouldn't dig that and west country clegg was all defensive well there was a little bit of a beep and all that it's just funny how the mind works instead of the new guy going oh my god i've got to learn it was the person who knew how to find them was on the defensive i just thought it was really really funny and eye-opening yeah so the other guy had to go through the process of learning what these things what these tiny things sound like as a Another interesting one, a more recent video, was by a detectorist called Bludicus Detects. Uh, she's had a lot of good luck recently, a gold, a gold coin and, you know, quite a few hammers. And she put a little clip in one of her videos about helping people find hammered coins. And she found the hammered coin and then she reburied it where she knew it was and said, all right, I'm going to go over it now, uh, like quite quick. You know expect you know like you're not going to hear it and then i'll go low and slow and you'll hear it and a funny thing happened if you watch it back this is my interpretation of it so she went over it quick and the thing pinged and i think she was shocked and you can see her on the video trying to avoid this <laughs> hammered coin and it would just give out little peeps and then she really kind of forced it and you know got rid of the noise and then slowed down uh, low and slow and you could you could hear it way better than you could before but because you knew it was there you could hear that tiny little peep okay so this is the point I'm going to try and emphasize okay so this is the point I'm going to try and emphasize so let's say you're walking a little bit fast and basically I've put down a Queen Victoria style penny okay so there's a Queen Victoria style penny there and you'll be walking, yeah, maybe fast and you'll hear something, you'll, you'll perhaps catch it and then this, this is what you'll do, you'll go back and you'll do this. Okay, so that wiggle as you kind of like, you know, you wiggle over the top of it is one of the most underestimated and under discussed points in detecting because it's over by then you kind of like D -d 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 -d. no there's something there yeah 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 something there something big oh i think it's this i think it's that right i'm going to dig it now when it comes to small hammer coins if you're going too fast what's going to happen is you'll you'll swing your detector head particularly if it's you know there's quite a few signals on there it might go boop, 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 as it goes across you know it makes little noises doesn't it so if you're going fast, you might have heard a little ping, boop, boop, boop. but if you're going fast, you'll probably have taken two or three strides and you'll be thinking, do I dig it, do I not? You then got perhaps another noise coming. So it's going low and slow more 
for your well <laughs> Uh, so that you don't miss any ground but it's giving your brain time to process giving your brain the machine will be louder over it if it's low and slow might ping a couple of times but it's going to give you time to kind of think hang on a second it's going to slow down before any other noise it's just going to give you time to be able to process that noise and go back because you've all done it you go out you kind of hear something like a you know a, a big copper and it's just clipped the edge or something and you stop kind of go back retrace your steps that's way way more important for one of these tiny hammered coins okay okay so we have our hammered coin if you're going fast it's, it's got hardly any chance go slow yeah Okay, so you need oh, <laughs> railway. So you need you need that first peep. But listen, sounds ginormous now. Look at that wiggle. I'm getting freezing cold now, so I'm going to be going in. Going to be going in soon. But on level two detecting you'll be going low and slow and you'll be looking out for low numbers 10 11 12 13 14 15 this is on the equinox sorry if you've got something else you'll be looking for those low numbers okay and if you think because basically the big coins are going to take care of themselves they will pop out but you want to be going slow enough to find those it's where most of the hammer coins will be now just hang on if i can describe it silver wants to be found and that will be trying to tell you that it's there but it's going to be reflecting from a small diameter it's not going to be a huge noise it's not going to be a massive noise and it's not going to be from a massive area it's going to be from a small it's going to be like a dot shining back up and then i'm not saying not to dig anything else but that's what people will be looking for okay a focus dot uh quite high pitched yeah that's your level two hunting for these coins now level th level three digging uh, and you'll be able to look up other people talking about it is looking for deep signals this is something completely different completely different okay and um, okay so i was i was going to talk about the circumstances of level three digging which i'll i'll kind of uh, say afterwards but level three digging is digging towards and at the absolute limit of the depth that your detector can go to okay so it's not going to be a big signal you're talking about something absolutely faint and tiny wait beyond level two where you're finding um yeah so my most productive field for hammered coins found 14 on if i will i'll go inside and talk about it yeah so basically if if i found a, a hammered coin there and i dug it out okay then after i'd uh, just checked around put the lid back on I'll then put something down identifiable a bit of pottery or you know the stone on or something that so i know that and then level three i would be absolutely looking for anything and everything around here and then gradually work my way out yeah not none of this business okay yeah maybe at the start but then you're absolutely trying to go through any kind of little noise right this is why it's important to dig close to where you've found hammered coins um so this this group here is from one field uh, these were found on one end of the field and those were found on the other end of the same field 
with not a lot in between. And the story of the field is basically a little bit of the story of the three levels of digging. So uh, that was the first item to come off. And then I think it was one of either of those two came off next. And pretty much the finds kind of went down, not in strict size order, but pretty much went down in size order. So that was the first and that so far has been the, the last. At the start, I was, you know, going across clearing out the larger items more than likely. Once they started to thin out, I was definitely slowing up and looking for these individual dots of uh, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, uh, what have you. That came out, that was after a, it absolutely poured down. Um, so that was a, quite a deep signal. But going very slow and looking for individual peeps of, um, like I say, low numbers. But then even after that, that was a real struggle. And then it was just looking for little whispers, faint chitter chatter, um, you know, digging iron, digging very, very deep, tiny um, signals. And a few of the smaller ones then started to pop pop out so it kind of went from a bit of level one digging almost low and slow and then over the patches where I've found those going incredibly slow backwards and forwards backwards and forwards on anything uh, and digging absolutely any noise so not not skipping rubbish signals digging everything but you can only pretty much do that when you've found a real hot spot you couldn't do that you couldn't do that on the beach you wouldn't get more than uh, 10 feet in a day okay uh, so those were off one field those were off the field behind it and then those were off the field behind that and the fields are quite close together so once you've found your site you dig everything I've been on other sites and not so much so those were off a farm three fields together um, there's seven coins that are with the museum that came off the field with that. Not too far away, near the same area. Those three were off one field, uh, but not together, spread out over the field. That was on the field next to that field. Uh, then there was a gap of a field, and then that was on the field uh, one over. That was on the field above that. And then those two, kind of not too far away, one on one field, one on another field, uh, but in the kind of the same district. Uh, those two, believe it or not, were found on the beach. Uh, but after after digging, after digging 10,000 finds, um, you know, just nipping out nearly every day, just for an hour or two, and over, uh, you know, over, 18 months gradually I found those two are the only two hammered coins but did manage to find two uh, these are individual finds but from roughly uh, the same area so separated by a few fields so they but they were just one-offs in individual fields and then those three were off three separate farms so as you can tell the these things, well, in my experience, these things group together. So you want that site, don't you? Yeah. So that's where you're heading towards. So spindle walls, pilgrims ampullas, sites like that. And no, this is a little bit of a childish drawing, but there you go. Um, it, it would be very impractical to be digging these signals basically because if, if you're in a um, a trashy area or there's bigger signals on the ground you're just not going to be able to hear any of these signals there's just going to be other stuff in the way that will have to come off first now these deep signals are for when everything else has gone and in a patch or working your way across a field where you think that there's been hammered coins and that there may be some very deep so you're going to hear a little fraction of something 
Now, if your detector makes a consistent little noise, doesn't matter how small. So I'm not talking it's just hit a little bit of grass and peeps. I'm talking about it. Basically, your detector is telling you that there's something there. That's the key piece of information. There is something there. Now, you're going to be digging deep, which is a bit tiresome. However, if you're digging deep, the chances of it being a hammered coin or an ancient artifact increase dramatically compared to anything uh, near the surface. So this is just for deep signals. So just give you a bit of advice. If you know it's going to be deep, it's at the limit of your detector, then I would dig a fairly deepish hole. If you dig shallow, then it can be very, it can be likely that you dig, you dig, you know, say there's, say there's a tiny little hammer there at the limit, yeah, or, or in the side somewhere. You dig to here, you swing your detector over that hole, it could tell you that there's nothing there. It won't pick, it won't pick it up now that the soil and connectivity, just sneezed, excuse me. So once the connecting soil has gone and it's still set halfway down you can swing your detector over the top and it will say that there's nothing there so your pinpointer on the detector head is your best tool it will tell you that there is something there and to carry on digging what I suggest you do is a little bit of a light bulb shape the last thing you want to do is these things are so few and far between is to put your spade through it so dig around take the soil out and put it on the top you can keep putting your you know your, your individual little pinpointer in if you want but I find it better just to keep digging out and using the pinpointer on your detector which is by far your best thing and then keep repeatedly checking your checking your spoils if you think that if you if you're questioning yourself is there anything there was there anything in the hole and then the next thing is you dug out deeper 12 15 maybe even more inches and the next thing is you swing your detector coil over that pile and it gives you a sharp 12 or something like that then you are you're in business it could be a little button it could be a tiny little piece of lead but if it's a sharp 12 13 14 15 or whatever there's a very good chance that you've now got a hammered but you can only kind of do this real deep digging once everything else has got off and perhaps in an area where you've had a few hammered coins. So if you have found, uh, you know, one or two or three, whatever, hammered coins, and they are that size, well, you could be, you could be in, you could be in luck. Um, you know, if you found a sixpence, a groat or something like that, and you haven't really found anything smaller, then I would definitely go back to that spot, if you can. Go back to that spot and detect every item around there to the limit of your detector. You know, anything, any little peep and pap, dig anything, and you know, because that's the spot that you need to be. I'd love to hear that uh, that little piece of advice has helped somebody find a hammered coin. Good luck everyone.